What can you sort of tease about where we So, can you tell us a little more about Badass Jeremy? What's no. coming up for him? Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, it, like I said up there, it's, it's Jeremy, Jeremy's gone through so much, you know, he's gone through so much loss and went from this kind of soft, sensitive kid that wore his heart on his sleeves to you know, being, becoming callous to the world, you know, kind of starting to, to become a little harder and, and, and not rely so much on emotions, but become, you know, push back a little bit and start, rather than self-destructing, getting involved in situations to help work in a productive manner. Um, so I think <laughs> upcoming these next couple next episodes, couple, big time. he really gets involved and really starts to... Um, to really starts to understand the world for what it is and really starts to just push back and just antagonize as much as he can. Does, does like something specific set him off or is it kind of a combination of I mean it's a combination of everything but I think the next episode is it? The next episode is what gets him to his new It's new like new a, place. A, a double whammy of I cannot of exciting incidents, as I say. You know, he um he he has information now that he learned from Tyler and he knows things that our heroes don't know and so he gets to walk in the door and say, Hey, look at me, like I learned stuff and I have stuff to share and that's what kinda of gets him in the group. And then something happens while he's in the group that's so kind of hardcore catastrophic that he's like, you know, I think in the promo trailer you saw him say she's gonna pay. And like now nah, like she's gonna pay and it's because the shit, as they say, goes down, <laughs> and and Jeremy's now got you know an axe to grind. Yeah, I like that axe to grind. <laughs> we haven't seen anything for a while with uh, Jeremy and Alaric. What's their relationship going to be like now that they're sort of working together? Well, you know, one of the things that we really want to explore, and we haven't started it yet. We've been kind of like tiptoeing into it and teeing it up, but. Um, you know, I love the idea of Alaric as a mentor, Alaric as a father figure, big brother figure, you know, he's, Alaric's going to be spending a lot more time in the Gilbert house, maybe a little, few little overnights with Aunt Jenna, you know. Um, and we actually wrote a scene that never made it to air and never shot, where uh, Elena, you know, is creeping through the house because she hears something and she's scared and we're like, oh, is it a dream or is there a vampire in the house? What's going on? And she turns on the lights and puts the lark in his underwear. It's been kind of busted, you know, shagging Aunt Jenna. But, um, but I think that that's a really yeah, I mean, valuable... he's been involved in the family business yeah. too, which is haunting vampires. So yeah. I feel like... I mean, at some point, I'm guessing yeah. he'll train me in the way. So. I, I think that I think that for a kid like Jeremy, who's who's looking for his purpose in life and who's finding it, you know, in his own ways, to have a mentor and a dad and a friend in Alaric is going to be really important. So we haven't written that yet, but we're very excited to get on that road. And I want to shoot a crossbow. I feel like that'd be fun. <laughs> So there are werewolves in Mystic Falls now. Are there any other creatures we should look forward to in upcoming episodes? Not yet. Not yet. Although we make jokes of, you know, of, of the strange and, and, and unexplainable new forces that will eventually have to you know, show up and bartend in the Mystic Grill. Um, but not yet. We're, we, try to, we, we try to hold back on that for as long as we can um, because we think it's series long story as opposed to you know having to jump right out of the gate and slam all different supernatural entities into the show um, eventually there's going to be a formula that's going to grow out of the show and the storytelling that'll be a little bit more uh, amenable to the monster of the week the demon of the week you know um, but until then we're just going to kind of keep building one brick at a time you know, at least they're uh, equal opportunity. I mean, every, every mystic creature gets a chance to live there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, you know, Frankenstein's like, coming next, actually. Yeah. <laughs> In the beginning of the show, Kevin was pretty vocal that his influence was Dark Shadows. Yes. So that was heavy thing. And that, to me, is, in a lot of ways, this really does feel like a modern-day Dark Shadows, especially with the gradual introduction of different supernatural creatures. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. We, I, I didn't watch Dark Shadows growing up. He did, I know. But I was an enormous Buffy and Angel fan and huge fan of the Twilight novels. And, you know, I kind of come at the show like, the, you know, the 13-year-old girl that, <laughs> that uh, you know, that loves and absorbs all that stuff. And 
So in the beginning of the series, we actually had a really hard time trying to figure out like what is the formula for the show, how it, what is every episode going to feel like, and, and what can we get away with. And we very quickly realized it's much more dark shadows. It's it's a gothic horror soap genre, you know, like character piece, you know, and that's really hard to write, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> really hard. But um, but yeah, and the world can. The world is small, but it can keep growing and expanding on itself, and and you can introduce extra elements and do time, and and there's always great sort of like high stakes emotional roller coaster happening, and uh, and it, so that's why that's why it's working so far. Well, is there a fear of Google, and by that do I mean like you know like like you're, you're, you go online and look at what people are saying about Jeremy. I mean, yeah. you know, is there, is there, Hysteria. are you afraid to <laughs> look, or does it help you, or? I mean, if they're talking about it, then it's cool. Really I, I don't really know how to work my computer um, all that well, so. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That. It's sad, but true. Crossbow, <laughs> yes, computer, no. What? Crossbow, yes, computer, no. Oh, yeah, I'll take the crossbow. You know what? You know No, I, um, I obsessively check that stuff. <laughs> And sometimes I'm like, stop it, Julie, stop it, don't do it, don't do it, don't click, you know, and then, and then I, uh, yeah, you know, look, I, one of the greatest things about this experience is that our fan base is very vocal, uh, the community is, runs very deep, and they're, they're very, very supportive, and that's good. Um, when they, when they aren't supportive, that hurts, you know, and it, and you read it, and you're like, really, like, you're gonna pick on that, like, of everything that we did, you're gonna just pick on that one little detail, and that can get frustrating, and then the, the thing that you have to remember, or that I have to remind myself all the time is, <coughs> excuse me, it's like, a, it's a microcosmic m amount of the entire viewing public, and just because a certain, you know, there's certain enthusiasm for something or distaste for something else, it doesn't necessarily represent everybody that watches the show, and it's so easy to get caught up in, like, especially, like, all these girls, like, Damon, Elena, forever, you know, Delena, <laughs> and they're like, oh, God, like, nothing else in the show's working except for Damon and Elena, and then, and then you take a step back, and you're like, okay, wait, now. like, stay off Twitter, just get off Twitter, shut it down, <laughs> sign off. How... When you were deciding to do that whole storyline with, with Damon snapping Jeremy's neck, were you hesitant at all to do to go that far? <laughs> no, she Let me tell you. <laughs> well, I mean, Kevin Williamson, we're sitting at lunch at the Soho house in like week one of Breaking <laughs> Shore. <Shining>, right? <laughs> Let's mess Jeremy up. <laughs> no, I mean week one of, of Breaking Story for the season. And he we start talking and we knew that, you know, we knew that Jeremy was going to recover, that he wasn't gonna be a vampire and we knew we were gonna get him the ring and we did we knew all that. But he starts pitching and he's like, Well then and then Damon comes and what and then all of a sudden Damon goes and he snaps Jeremy's neck and I went, oh! <laughs> and I never react like that to a story pitch because I'm with them all the time. My jaw fell on the floor. I said, that is the most messed up, twisted, ridiculous, horrible thing that is awesome. And you know, because it's like, if I'm having that reaction as someone who's like heard everything, and I lose my mind over it. I like fell off my couch. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it, it just, it blew my mind. And knowing that we were doing it in the first episode, and that we were just going there, and you know, I mean, my other my other sort of thing, and you know, it's such an unpopular opinion, but I really feel strongly about it, is everybody's, everybody's willingness to love Damon no matter what he does. And I love Damon, no matter what. Are you kidding? I mean, who, who doesn't love Damon? But if everybody loves him, no matter what he does, then how is he, how does what he does matter? You know, how does it have an impact? How does it have anything profound about it? And how is he still either your anti-hero or your villain? How does any of it mean anything? And so for him to do something like that, that seriously hardcore, like I felt, even though I knew a lot of people were going to be upset about it, and it's upsetting. I felt it was really important for Damon's character. We're all said and done, as much as it was important for Jeremy's. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I grabbed that off. Is there an overarching plan for the story? Or for the, the, the story, the whole show? Yeah. Or like this season? Yeah, very much so. Yeah.
very so much so. We know where we're ending the season um, the same way that we knew where we were ending last season. You know, we just we know where we're heading. We know our our diabolical master plan, the mythology. We know that completely. The hard part is, you know, episodically figuring it out and keep it on track. But, yeah, that's <laughs> Next year, I don't know. <laughs> when did you guys decide to turn the carol? Um, you know, also that was from the brainchild of Mr. Kevin Williamson. Um, I was just explaining over there that you know we have this magnificent ensemble of actors and people that we love and that we like, painstakingly chose to be in the show back in the beginning of the series, who were getting very underutilized in the first season, and um, and coming like sort of sitting back and working half a day and then watching these guest stars come in and have these amazing stories, and we realized that the only way to to give them their due as actors and as our part of our ensemble was to was to really like throw them into the mix and and having Caroline, you know, who I just love the idea of like. What did I do? Are you giving up fourteen ninety two? I I said fourteen. I said I said fourteen ninety. Oh, 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 you just did or Russia. <laughs> now it's just mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? You were talking about the Russia. Oh, the ensemble, yeah, Caroline. <laughs> yes. No, I'm bad. Being able to. go sit in my corner. Being able to, you know, give her, make her uh, a genre character, but all her human elements, the stuff about her personality that was so, like, insecure and wonderful and and scheming and control freaky and all that great stuff, and then like magnifying that a thousand percent and. Ironically, it making her the yeah, one of the more in control vampires that we have. That's the fun of it. And then you know, then he gets to be part of our genre world more, and Trevino does, and and so we get to see more from these guys. Who are Matt is so left all alone. I mean, Matt, yeah, but Matt's, <laughs> Matt's the end game. Like Matt's gonna be the last one standing when all is said and done, because he's gonna be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> About pizza. <laughs> I, I know you map these things out and you've got the master plans, like you said, but as the show is actually being <laughs> done, the actors are bringing we already the themselves to the characters and all that. How yeah, much of an like, impact does that have on the evolution of the show? Like, where are we you know, I think it's a little yeah, bit of like um, the hand that feeds, you know? it's it's. We think that we're shaping the characters, but what we're really doing is reacting positively to something that they're doing. Like, I remember like last year, you know, because Jeremy was a kid last year. He was a kid, and kids are hard to write for, you know, especially because he was a broody emo kid, right? All like, oh, what is this? Don't know. And there was a moment when I saw the cut of, of you and Anna when you're outside school with your headphones and you're walking across the school, and there's a great song going, and, and Anna comes up and says, oh, I'm starting school here. And you're like, that's awesome. And I looked at you in the cut, and I was like, oh my God, I just got a crush on Jeremy Gilbert, you know? Like, and how great that like I saw your confidence as a like a the, the second half of a of a romantic interest. You growing up from like this sort of self involved Jeremy like you know, cowering away in the corner and, and feeling life's pain to like chest up and like confidence and hey, I like this girl and this is awesome. And then I suddenly was like, Well, let's do more, you know, let's let's do more with Jeremy and let's make him a man and let's get him involved and so yeah. It was you know, yeah. it, it it one feeds the other in a good way. Well he's gone for me more than the scary crap out of me. Yeah. Well and he you know he's about to learn some pretty valuable life life lessons in the next few episodes, you know, like there's, it's be careful what you wish for, for sure, um, which is always a theme in our show, you know, like, yeah, you could, you want to dive right in and, like, swim in the mix, and then, like, the shark comes and bites you, you know, <laughs> so. Blood in the water, up on out. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, guys, I'm actually flash back to you guys have to just now. Oh, thank you. Thank you.